So today we'll continue our discussion of uh, LL1 uh, parsing. Uh, so last time uh, we looked into the uh, you know this grammar and we converted this grammar into the right recursive form which is this and then we computed the uh, the first and follow sets so uh, the first sets and the follow sets of all the symbols in the grammar uh, so now what does the first set mean just to review the concepts what No, it's not what comes before. So when we say the first of expression, it's not what comes before expression, because expression is going to be the whole thing. So it's what can, what comes in the, uh, as a prefix, or the first symbol in a string derived from that uh, variable. So the first of a variable, the first of variable x is a symbol, uh, a terminal. More specifically, it's a terminal that can appear as the first terminal or as the first symbol in a string derived from x. Okay? A terminal that can appear as the first symbol in a string derived from x. This is the first, what first of x means. Now, follow is a different concept. What's follow? It's also a terminal that can appear immediately after a string derived from x. So, okay, okay, so if this is x, and x has a certain expansion, then the first of x is a symbol that can appear here. That's the first of x. So this is the first. And the follow of x is a symbol that can appear here. <coughs> so the first is part of x, while the follow is something that appears immediately after x. Now what does it mean when epsilon belongs to first of x? If epsilon belongs to first of x, what does that mean? You can replace x, or you can uh, substitute epsilon for x. So if epsilon belongs to first of x, this means that this whole thing can be replaced with an epsilon. Or x can be absent, or uh, in, in a certain um, you know, grammar. Like if you have a grammar, um, uh, you know, y is x a b c if epsilon belongs to first of x this means that you can replace this x with an epsilon so you may not have an x okay so this is a review of you know what we mean by first and follow sets okay so now in the LL1 parsing technique, the LL1 parsing technique is a parsing technique that uh, scans the string from left to right. It does leftmost derivation and it has only one symbol of look ahead. Uh, we showed how LL1 works on this grammar, but uh, the only thing that we didn't do last time is writing the rules, writing the uh, exact rules uh, for uh, ch checking if a given grammar is LL1 or not. So given a grammar, is this grammar LL1 or not? So this is going to be done by checking on the different productions. So for every production, Uh, let's say x goes to uh, beta 1 or beta 2 through beta n. 
Now the question is, what, what's the condition that every production in a grammar should satisfy in order for the grammar to be LL1, in order to be parsable using the LL1 parsing technique? Well, at least, you know, first give me the intuitive answer. <coughs> Every grammar here. So these are the different alternatives. So what's the condition that these different alternatives must satisfy in order for this grammar to be parsable using LL1? Like here. So here we have these three different productions, uh, three different alternatives. So this is beta 1, this is beta 2, this is beta 3, and this is x. So why was, when, when we looked at this, why was there only one valid option? So the, the, the key idea in LL1 is that you always have one valid option, one valid alternative. You can't have more than uh, uh, one valid option. What do we mean by valid? When we match these beta 1, beta 2, beta 3 with what we have in the input, clearly beta 1 and beta 2 have different start or first uh, symbols. So clearly with beta 1 and beta 2, I will not have any problem. I, you know, the symbol in the input will either be a plus or a minus. It cannot be both. So here there is no intersection. But what about this? What condition should this satisfy? Well, it's clearly different. Yeah, so you cannot have duplication. So beta 1, beta 2, beta 3 must be different. There is no point in repeating the same beta, right? So these betas are different. They are different. What if I have, like, if I have something like this? Uh, minus uh, factor. Will this be LL1? No, it will not be LL1 because I have a minus and a minus. So I have something in common. So if what I'm seeing in the input is a minus, then this option and this option are both valid. So beta 2 and beta 4 will always be two valid options. They have something in common, right? So they start with minus. So if I had a beta 4 that starts with a minus, this grammar won't be LL1 grammar. If I see a minus in the input, I will not know whether to substitute beta 2 or beta 4 for x or for expression. So clearly, if I had something like this, the grammar wouldn't have been LL1. But now, what should, what's the condition that this must satisfy in order for the grammar to be LL1, or in order to have only one valid option. So we talked about this last time. So, I should look at the follow set of beta 3, which is the op epsilon. I should look at the follow set of this, and the follow set of this cannot have what? Cannot have a plus or a minus. So the follow set of beta 3, which is this thing. Now the follow set of beta 3 is the same as follow set of expression prime. The follow of expression prime cannot have <coughs> plus or minus. Because if it has plus or minus, then I will have multiple alternatives, multiple valid alternatives. Because I can then substitute epsilon for expression prime, and the symbol that I'm seeing in the input belongs to something that comes after this. But as we have seen last time, the, the follow of expression prime did not have 
uh, did not have plus or minus. What was the follow of expression prime? The follow of expression prime was end of file or close parentheses. So it does not have plus or minus. If it had plus or minus, if the follow of expression prime had a plus in it, then this grammar won't be parsable using LL1. Because in that case, I will have two valid options. Yeah. Can you do an example? Yeah. So, it just add, add the plus here. Then you'll have an example where this is not LL1. So we'll do more examples later. But it's, you know, the whole idea is if you have an intersection, anything in common between the first sets of these options, then the grammar is not LL1. So this is an example. So add plus, then this is not LL1. Okay. Uh, so now what's the, what's the gener general condition? The general condition is that we should look it, when, whenever we have these alternatives, we should look into the, what we call the first plus. First plus of x beta i. So first plus of beta i is First of, sorry, not beta i, x goes to beta i, of the production x goes to beta i. First plus of x goes to beta i is just first of beta i if there is no epsilon in the first set. If there is no epsilon in the first set, we don't have a problem. But if we have a, an epsilon in the first set, then we should look at the union of the first of beta i and the follow of x. So in this case, so what's first plus of beta 1? What's here, what's first plus of beta 1 in this example? So beta 1 is this. The first of this is just plus. Because it doesn't have epsilon. So the first plus is the same as the first if there is no epsilon. Now what's the first plus of beta 2? It's just the minus because I don't have epsilon. Now what's the first plus? of beta 3. Now this has epsilon in its first set. If it has epsilon in its first set, then the first plus of beta 3 is going to be the follow So here you can, in fact you can take the take the epsilon out of this, but it, as we'll see, it will not, it will not matter uh, whether you take the epsilon or not. It will not make a difference when, uh, uh, when, you, uh, when you examine the different alternatives, because there can be only one alternative that has an epsilon in it. If you have multiple alternatives with epsilon in them, then, uh, you will not have a, uh, it will not be LL1 anyway. So the first plus of beta 3 is going to be the follow of uh, expression prime. And the follow of expression prime is end of file and close parentheses. So if I have any intersection between these three sets, if there is any intersection, then 
this grammar is not LL1. I will have multiple valid alternatives. But clearly, these three sets are disjoint, which means that this grammar is LL1. Okay. Any single uh, symbol that appears in multiple sets would mean that I have multiple valid alternatives and the grammar will not be LL1. Okay, so here these three sets are disjoint. Okay, any question on this? So now for every production x beta 1, beta 2, beta n so who can formulate the condition for LL1? So what should I have? What, sh what should the condition be? So the first pluses of these should be disjoint. disjoint. All the first pluses should be disjoint. So if you compare any pair of alternatives, the first plus, so first plus of beta i intersected with first plus of beta j equals phi for any i and j that is between 1 and n i is not equal to j. Any two different i and j between 1 and n. So if you take any pair of them and you look at the intersection, the intersection should, ha should be phi. So here, if you take any pair of these, you look at the intersection, the intersection is phi. You don't have anything in common. If you have one thing in common, then you have multiple alternatives, then you wouldn't know you know, which production to use for substitution.